Uh, this session uh, is about the uh, stiff shoulder. I'm going to talk about the assessment of the stiff shoulder. We've got some questions during the uh, lecture, so if you all have your phones ready. Um, what I'm going to talk about today is very basic. It's about the examination, the history, the investigations you need to order. It's not uncommon that I see a patient referred to the office. They've never been examined. They've never had their shirt taken off. They come in with their uh, MRI with a three-page report that they can't really understand, but they're certain that they're going to die when they read the report with all the uh, pathology seen. So hopefully, we'll be able to show you how we examine the patient, how we assess the situation. When I finish, uh, Paul's going to talk about the natural history and the treatment of capsulitis. John's going to talk about the non-operative treatment of osteoarthritis. Todd's going to talk about arthroscopic and surgical treatment. And I'm going to finish up for a few minutes talking about arthroplasty. So the definition of a stiff shoulder is loss of both active and passive movement. So let's take a case, if everyone could get their phones ready. Uh, we've got a 55-year-old housewife, no trauma, a family history of diabetes, a three-month seeing lateral arm pain and night pain, and over the last six weeks, the patient has noted a profound loss of movement. When we examine her, she has 90 degrees of active elevation, and when I try and passively move her shoulder beyond 90 degrees, I can't move it at all. She's got external rotation to zero degrees. She can get her arm around to her sacrum, but no further, and her power is normal. So the first question, and I'd like you all to uh, grab your phones, is what investigation should we order? An X-ray, an ultrasound, an MRI or an MR arthrogram, A and B, or A and C? Could you all uh, just key in on your phones your answer? And while we're waiting for that, I should tell you John Best is a little bit fragile today. He was involved in that uh, well-publicised bank robbery during the week up at Randwick in the Westpac branch. John went in there, he was second in line, and the guy in front of him suddenly put on a surgical mask, pointed the gun at the teller and asked for all the money. And as the teller put the money in the bag, uh, he, he clipped the uh, robber's face, the mask fell off. He quickly put it on and he said to the teller, did you see my face? And the teller said yes and he shot the guy. Then he turned to the next teller and he said, did you see my face? And the teller, and the teller said yes and he shot the teller. And John was right behind him and he turned round to John and, you know, John's not too bright, I must say, but on this occasion he said to John, did you see my face? And as quick as a flash, John said, no, but my mother-in-law over there saw it. <laughs> okay. So, have we got some answers? No answers? Okay. Oh, dear. Well, I haven't got time to vote again, guys. So look, um, the only investigation you need on this occasion is a plain X-ray. You do not need an MRI, and it's interesting, uh, quite a few people, before I switched it over, ordered an MRI. Now, the problem with an MRI is that 0.1% of, of the population present to their doctor or physio every year with a stiff shoulder. And if we didn't order an MRI in Australia, we'd save about $20 million in health costs a year, 
That's equivalent to employing 750 physios in the public hospital or 750 nurses in the public hospital or five medical administrators. <laughs> so we all need to be very careful. So let me keep going. So we get the x-ray, which is all we need, and you can see that the x-ray is pretty normal. So the next question is what is the diagnosis? So I'll go through it again. We have a middle-aged female, three-month history of pain and limitation of movement and loss of active and passive movement and a normal x-ray. So is the diagnosis capsulitis, osteoarthritis, a locked posterior dislocation, a tumour, or none of the above? And while we're waiting for everyone to uh, give their answer, I must thank Doron for organising the uh, sessions today and the whole uh, conference. But probably a lot of you don't know Doron well, he is a very, very prominent modern art collector in this country, and he has one of the best collections of modern art. And one day, Duron was talking to his mate, who happens to be his solicitor, and his mate said to him, you know, Duron, your wife, Taryn, has a good eye. She bought two pictures for $5,000 each, and they're now worth between one and two million dollars each. And Duron, who thought himself a very astute uh, um, collector of art, said, what were the pictures of? And the solicitor said, you and your secretary. <laughs> OK. All right, so. Well, look, a lot of you know uh, this, so it is adhesive capsulitis. It's not none of the above. So let's uh, go through the causes of a stiff shoulder. Adhesive capsulitis is by far and away the most common cause. Osteoarthritis is not common in the shoulder. It's not a weight-bearing joint. Postoperatively, the physiotherapist will see a lot of stiff postoperative shoulders. Dislocations can present with a loss of active and passive movement. Tumours are very rare. Um, but the hysterical shoulder in the compensation patient does occur. And you can see in that arthroscopic slide on your right what we see with a frozen shoulder or adhesive capsulitis, inflammation of the capsule, the biceps tendon and other structures in the shoulder. So a history is very important. We need to know their age, their hand dominance, their occupation, recreational activities, sports, because all of those may have a bearing on, the, on what we advise them to do and how they uh, uh, injured the shoulder if they did injure it. We need to know what shoulder operations they've had. We need copies of the operation reports. But we also need a good medical history. We need to know if they have arthritis, if they have diabetes or thyroid disease in the family, because in adhesive capsulitis, it's very common in people who have endocrine disease. And every patient who I see who has a capsulitis, I get their general practitioner to organise some endocrine tests. Also, adhesive capsulitis is not uncommon after breast surgery, even breast biopsies done under ultrasound. They're not uncommon after head and neck surgery or neurosurgery. And you need to know if they also have a family history of diabetes. We ask them about trauma, the length of symptoms, the location of pain, which is usually, but not always, about the lateral arm between the tip of the shoulder and the elbow, exacerbating and relieving factors. They almost all get night discomfort loss of movement, loss of power, and always ask if they have any neurological symptoms. Beware of pain at rest. As a general rule, shoulder pain only occurs with activity and at night. 
someone who has constant and unremitting pain, those who have symptoms referable to the neck or scapula and paresthesia in their arms. Now, as John Negreen mentioned, orthopaedic surgeons are not too bright. You know what they say, as strong as an ox and twice as smart. So when we examine a patient, we, we look, we feel, we move, and that's the best way of doing it. So when we look, we're looking for wasting about the spinatus muscles and deltoid, any prominence of the scapula, any bruising. If you see a patient with bruising down the arm, like the one on the left, he either has a fracture or an acute rotator cuff tear. Look at the biceps, see if it's ruptured or not. Then we feel. We have to feel all the structures to determine where the pain is. And with capsulitis or arthritis, anterior joint line, about the biceps tendon, and about the rotator cuff, you always need to feel the acromion and the scapula and the cervical spine. And then the most important thing is to get the patient from the front and from the back to lift their arms up and down and look for their shoulder rhythm. You need to make sure there's no hitching. And if you look at the video on your right, looking from the back at the patient, you'll see the scapula rotates around the thorax. And as he brings his arm down, the scapula stays close to the thorax and doesn't pop out. Now, when you look at the next video of a lady with a capsulitis in her right arm, See how she can hardly actively lift her arm, and as she does so, she hitches her shoulder to indicate that there's little glenohumeral movement, and she's moving her shoulder blade or scapula upwards. You can see how she's doing that if you compare one side to the other. And then we get them to move. Active elevation is the first movement I test, then I test passive elevation. If the patient has a stiff shoulder, then active elevation is usually limited to 90 degrees or below, and then when you try and passively elevate it, you can get it no further. With a rotator cuff pathology, either impingement or a cuff tear, if they can only get their arm to 90 degrees actively, and then you, can, you should be able to passively move their arm up. So you can, if that happens, you know it's not a capsulitis or an arthritis or dislocation. I then test external rotation, and in the stiff shoulder, it usually uh, is limited to zero degrees or neutral. Internal rotation is usually limited to the sacrum, or sometimes not even that. And finally, if you want to test abduction, abduction is normally limited to about 60 degrees. I test external rotation power to exclude a cuff tear. That's the most sensitive index of a rotator cuff tear from a clinical perspective. So you get the patients to push their hands out with their elbows tucked into the side. And if it's weak on one side, they might have a rotator cuff tear. It can also be induced by pain. Don't forget that rarely, not often, but rarely, you can get a capsulitis associated with a cuff tear. Then I test internal rotation power uh, for subscapularis. I do the impingement sign, and with the impingement sign in capsulitis or arthritis, you can't get their arm above 90 degrees and it's very painful. The adduction sign or adduction sign is positive when they have arthritis of the acromioclavicular joint. It's easy for us as surgeons or doctors, if we can't quite tell whether their lo loss of movement passively is due to pain or to the capsulitis or arthritis, we can inject the subacromial space with local anaesthetic and cortisone, which um, allows them to lift the arm up passively without pain if it's rotator cuff or impingement. The speeds test and O'Brien's test are used to dis uh, discriminate uh, whether they have biceps pathology or labral pathology. Both of those tests are positive with capsulitis 
because the biceps is usually involved, and you can test the anterior posterior apprehension signs for instability. They're not really relevant uh, to do those tests um, with these type of patients. Um, just to complete the examination, the sulcus sign uh, is for multidirectional instability. The belly pressed or lift off sign is for subscapularis ruptures. And I do a test called the dynamic slap test in younger people when I'm looking for um, issues such as uh, a slap tear or instability. Some people also want to do the Adson's test to test for thoracic outlet syndrome where you test the radial pulse with the patient's head turned away during inspiration and expiration. And if they have a positive thoracic outlet sign, the radial pulse diminishes. So just briefly on investigations, with these patients, a plain X-ray is all you need to start off with. You don't need an ultrasound, which I hasten to add, is uh, a worthless investigation of no value whatsoever. And you really don't need to order an MRI unless you're looking for something more specific. And if you're going to order an MRI, I encourage you all to order an MR arthrogram because it makes the MRI a lot more accurate. The slide on your right is a CT arthrogram for those who are claustrophobic and can't uh, tolerate uh, an MRI if necessary. We get CT scans if we're looking for bony pathology. But the take home message is that in the vast majority of cases, all you need is a history, examination and plain x-ray. Thank you.